Tuesday mornings. Um, you know, uh, I think my dad told me once when I was young, he's like, I don't care what you do in life, but just be really good at it. And for some reason, I keep getting invited for complication talks at, <laughs> at several meetings. So thanks, Dad. Um, so last year, I showed something <laughs> really harrowing. This is John may like this one, because I'm sure he would never do this. But um, <laughs> luckily, no disclosures to my complication. Uh, it's a DVA case. I do a decent amount of DVAs. Um, I think we all know, you guys had talks today, I'm not going to belabor the point of why I do a DVA and all that, but it's for patients that we think truly are told no options. We know the mechanisms behind it. Uh, we know that there's a couple different ways to do it. Um, you know, I've done proximal DVAs uh, to the anterior tibial artery sometimes when I've had to and uh, been able to succeed. And so, you know, the thing in life, I think we do a lot of new cases, new techniques, and we get really proud of ourselves. And we're like, I'm pretty cool now. I'm kind of a big deal. Uh, I succeeded where others couldn't, and now I know what I'm doing. So, you know, it's an anterior tibial artery deviate because the patient did not have a posterior tibial vein. So it was actually the first one I ever did several years ago. And, you know, I was like, okay, it worked. You know, the patient healed. This is good. And it's not kind of what you see in most of the papers in terms of the access points. But when you're facing a horrential storm, you try to find any port, right? So what happens when you do these things is now you kind of get this I think I can handle any of these things, and you start getting confident. So I have this patient uh, a few years later, or actually it was about the third patient or something, and I, and I had to again think about what to do here because it was a bad wound on the TMA, on the dorsal side of that TMA, really necrotic. And as you can see here, uh, the posterior to the plantar circulation is not bad. There was no way to form this loop, but this is where I need blood flow. So yet again, I'm like, hey, I've done this anterior tibial game. I'm pretty good at this. Um, again, in direct injection, because people are like, maybe there's some hibernation. I'm like, nope, there isn't. So it's how I prep 100% of my patients, um, whole legs prep. So again, anterior tibial vein access, did the venous run to kind of see how things look. Things are patent, we're good. Um, I typically, before I was using um, a re-entry into a balloon, nowadays I just put a snare and uh, either re-enter into the snare, which I like that because it gives me really strong support, or I do the double gun sight because in IR, we use that a lot for other uh, areas. So I did that, got the balloon, came down, and got into the uh, venous circuit. And, uh, you know, what we do next typically is we do balloons. In the, in the first one I did, I had to stent. You know, if you do the posterior DVAs, you know that you kind of have that valve uh, just above the ankle and also one right across kind of that mid-calcaneus. In the anterior tibial circulation, uh, venous circuit, you actually have a valve right about here. So typically, I know that I'm going to have to uh, balloon aggressively and uh, stent it. So... Look good to me, and I think if you look at this, uh, John, I don't know what you think, but what do you think about that balloon? Looks pretty good, right? In terms of crushing the valves and getting your, what's that? Okay. <laughs> I wish you were there, because this is what I saw. Um, and we see this typically when you don't have the full outflow set up yet, you kind of get this pulsating flow where you haven't established enough of the out, outflow venous system. So, you know, I'm like, all right, let's look further down. Um, probably just need to get some more. I, I put my stent in here already. We're good, and, if, and I think many people who do DVAs knows I made one critical error before I did all this. John, do you know what that was? <laughs> you say starting? <laughs> uh, sorry, can we go back a slide? I can't seem to, uh, two slides, please. I can't seem to go back. Back. Uh, yeah, did you say don't even do the case? Is that what you said, John? Okay. No, so I stented it, ballooned it. I'm like, all right, good, we're getting flow down here. Now, this is those moments when you're like, oh crap. I don't know if you guys see what's happening here. I did establish outflow. The problem is that I established outflow into the tissues. So what happened was in my haste, I didn't confirm that I, I was in the distal, I was in the vein distally. The wire looked like it made a nice venous loop. Everything looked great, the balloon went up. I think I thought I had a waste, but you know, meanwhile I'm usually berating the fellows at the time. I probably wasn't paying attention, but. <laughs> Um, so this kind of sucks. Um, I basically established an arterialized flow into the tissue. So technically the wound is getting more arterial blood flow, if you think about it. But it's almost like I'm just sprinkling blood on the tissue itself. That's pretty much what it ended up being. So what do you do now? Well, I'm like, okay, after I regain consciousness, I uh, uh, ballooned more. And I'm like, okay, maybe if I just extend the stent a little more, I can somehow establish this. Um, so I tried that. I ballooned it to tampon out a little bit. I extended the stent because at this point... You know, what am I going to gain out of this? And still, um, after that, this is still what it looked like. As you can see, I'll try to forward it for everyone's uh, liking. Still kind of just flowing into nowhere. 
Um, so much so that I can actually see oozing coming from the uh, wound site, uh, the tissue itself. So luckily as an IR, I know how to shut things down too. So this is probably the world's fastest DVA creation and shutdown. Um, that's an Amplatzer plug in my DVA. So, you know, learning lessons was a couple years ago. This is what it looked like after plugging it. I still had my planter flow, but big deal. The guy's still going to, uh, the patient still was going to need a, a BK, which is what they got. So you win some, you lose some, but you learn a lot from each one of these things is uh, everything we learn, everything we do, don't skip steps. And I did that because, you know, as John said, the hospital is a big crap show. It's too crazy. There's 15 people talking to you. I have, you know, residents and med students and fellows and observers and people and you kind of lose sight of what you're doing sometimes and you forget something. So that was my big learning lesson. How would I prevent this? Like John said, maybe have someone else do it, that's better. <laughs> maybe don't do it at all. But what I learned and what a lot of us have learned over time that's made our life easier is I now access over the last year or two the plantar vein first if I'm doing a posterior. That saved a lot of this. So I'll access over here for the posterior. That helps you not worry about getting antegrade into the veins. It's a little difficult for the anterior tibial because you can't really do that unless you go around the other way. And I don't know if you really can, but that saved a lot of my cases, so uh, you know I'm glad I get to share my uh, my 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 mess up, so you guys don't ever create that. But thank you. Your dirty laundry. My dirty laundry. <laughs>